So Sylvia and I are together on Skype and we wanted to, uh, we encourage you to, uh, in week five, to use some form of multimedia to present your final reflective activity, the looking back, looking forward. So we thought Sylvia knows how to record Skype interviews and we thought we would interview each other and just about our reflections over the last four weeks of the ISWO. So Sylvia, I'm going to put you on deck first and I'll ask you as you're looking back over the last four weeks and <clears throat> however many days, um, what nuggets have you panned from our stream of activities this in this session? Um, well, this is our you know so this is our fourth time offering the ISWO through BC campus, um, and each time we you know we revise and we, we refine the materials. <clears throat> excuse me, in the layout and and we're always just really excited to see how the changes um, will impact participation and learning in the workshop. Um, we've actually revised it quite a bit over time from the first time we offered um, the ISWO until now. And so I'm always, um, I'm always keeping an eye open for, you know, evidence that the experience for participants maybe isn't quite what we'd hoped for. Um, or, you know, perhaps it even exceeds our expectations, which happens quite often, certainly has happened in this course. Um, <clears throat> so I always look for those surprises and, and reminders. Um, that we, you know, we all come to this learning space from different backgrounds and from different uh, levels of expertise. And, the, you know, the big question always is how do we take advantage of, of this opportunity, you know, for a distributed learning model, but also ensure that each individual is able to um, cope, uh, you know, because it, it is a little bit more difficult for some people, especially at the beginning, um, or that each individual is challenged enough. <clears throat> and so we, you know, we've got such a uh, distributed um, uh, audience, I, I guess, in, in the course, and, and the participants do come from all over the province and, and different uh, different levels, and even have different goals for themselves um, for taking the course. So, so over the past four weeks um, or so, you know, a lot of things stand out. Um, but I plucked out a few nuggets, or <clears throat> I should say, I panned panned out a few nuggets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, you know, I, I think number one, there definitely were some struggles with the course environment. Um, and it seems like, you know, despite efforts every time to improve the navigation and the look and feel of the course, um, it can still be really difficult for, for participants to make their way in and to really feel comfortable. Um, in this ISWO um, workshop, there were quite a few suggestions that were put forward and I really appreciated that. Um, you know, one, one person I remember suggested that we call individuals before the ISWO begins, so ahead of, ahead of the start date. And I think that's a great idea, although it's, you know, maybe not practical necessarily. I think it's something that could really um, make that person sort of feel more welcomed and also more comfortable at the beginning of the course. I think somebody else also suggested FAQs and, you know, thinking through the logistics of how, how that would come together. Um, uh, I haven't quite, you know, gone there yet, but it, it, again, another another good suggestion. I think there were others as well. Um, but, you know, having said that, um, there's lots of ideas about how to make people comfortable and so on. Um, everyone did seem to adjust fairly quickly and make, make sense of things. So really it is maybe just a matter of taking time to poke around. Um, I think that, you know, obviously some people have more time than others and some people will need more time than others. So this is just um, something that I, you know, I'm thinking about, like how to give fair warning about that uh, ahead you mean of time. So workload, Sylvia, is <clears throat> that what you mean? Fair warning in terms of the workload or in terms yeah. of the need for our playing to, to get comfortable in the environment? Well, I guess both, but I think it's more about um, the fact that it's, it is going to take some people longer if they're not familiar with the, Moodle learning management system, for example, or they're not used to working online. Um, it's it seems to be really difficult to just let people know ahead of time that it it might be a little bit of a shock <laughs> coming in if you don't have some of that background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel too too disconnected. Yes. When they first come in, yeah, yeah. It's too unfamiliar. <clears throat> yeah. All right. um, yeah, and I think there's a, you know, the other thing, the second thing that um, sort of stands out is, is that there is this tension between building community and 
<clears throat> either feeling overwhelmed or, you know, perhaps even a little bit annoyed by non-content related posts. Um, certainly, you know, in the introductions forum, obviously there's a lot of personal information shared and, and that sort of thing, a lot of back and forth and it was very casual and it was almost like, you know, walking into a coffee, sh coffee shop and sort of getting to know people before you get down to business. Um, <clears throat> so it's really quite a, quite a mix of, um, getting to know who, who is in the course. Yeah. Um, and really, for, you know, personally, I think that that's a very important component of the ISWO model because we rely on one another, you know, for the full five weeks to, you know, tackle our work together. So it's really important that we, um, know who we're working with. Um, so the second thing too is, is, um, you know, with this tension between community building and, and, uh, feeling overwhelmed is, is managing participation. And this sort of gets back to the first thing um, that I mentioned. Um, it links back, does it? It does. You know, it's, um, you know, just being able to manage your participation, like the, the forum subscriptions, um, knowing how to switch those off and on, knowing how to see where the new posts are, um, email filters. There's all kinds of little tips you know, on how to manage your participation, but it's a lot to sort through if you're um, not used to the volume in particular, um, because there is a lot all at once coming at you from those yeah. forums. Um, and, I th and the third thing, sort of in that same category of, you know, building community and, and feel feeling overwhelmed is, um, is just being mindful of um, our contributions to the forums and maybe using other other communication channels for certain conversations and I you know I noticed that quite often people tend to use the forum much the same way they use email and it isn't email and so there's a lot of one-on-one um, -on -one conversations not a lot but you know sometimes one-on-one -on -one conversations happening or um, right. maybe a team is trying to schedule a, a meeting um, and they're doing it in an open forum where other people are listening in so maybe that's not the most appropriate um, place to be doing that and so just really that comes with practice um, but it also comes with just knowing what tools are available yeah and also being on the receiving end of those messages I think sometimes that helps because that's the experience of being online is starting to understand when you speak out or write something online who's hearing it who sees it um, yes. you know where it, where it gets distributed or how it gets distributed yeah. So that's a good, I think it's a good lesson. It's just, unfortunately, we have so much packed into the time. It, it's difficult to know how to help them. Yeah, and you know, that's the thing with, with the ISWO overall is that we want people to experience this stuff. We maybe want people to feel annoyed <laughs> um, or, yeah. you know, or, or overwhelmed a bit because that's, that's in fact what it's like for your students, you know, when, when, you, when you go out to, um, to teach your first online course or... Uh, you know, you, you need to really understand what it's like on the learner side. And so and so it's not that we need to take away all of these things from the SWO. We just need to, um, maybe it's a matter of making people more aware that it's it's intentionally incorporated <laughs> into the workshop. That's right. We don't go on and on about our dogs just because we love them, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, and then the, the, um, the last thing is... is um, and it isn't the last thing, because as I said, there are several things that I would pan um, from this. But um, I've, I've just been really impressed with this um, offering of the ISWO, that just the level of engagement and the supportive culture um, that we've seen over the last few weeks. Uh, everyone's been really quick to just jump in and help and initiate new discussions, um, yeah, contribute exactly. resources, and sort of, you know, just gather together and get down to the facilitation and the learning. And it's just been really, really good to watch that. Yeah, because we don't always get it. That's it's right. Feels, eh? Yeah. And so how about you, Sylvia R? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Did you notice that sometimes people got lost as to which Sylvia they were talking to? <laughs> I noticed that happened quite a bit. <laughs> Um, well, in looking back, I'd say a lot of the, the uh, sort of things that I thought about, the nuggets that I gleaned, except you can't glean nuggets, but anyway, okay, <laughs> the nuggets that I pulled out when I thought back were similar to yours. Um, I think I was fairly clear at, at the beginning to say that that um, it, the discomfort that some people had expressed about the, the amount of time we spent in the introductions forum and, and so on and so forth, and also the fact that this time around, 
I didn't actually include much in terms of professional um, history. And uh, one of the participants quoted back one of the advice videos from Royal Roads, and, and it was from uh, one of the communications instructors who's really good. And uh, she had said something about, you have to establish your competence when you're the stranger in the group. And I guess it was interesting because I had kind of forgotten that mm -hmm. statement. And so that was a, a real learning for me that I, here I was, I was so focused on the, what to me was really important, which was trying to establish that personal feeling, the approachability, making people comfortable that first week when they come in and they're so intimidated by the environment often. You know, we've had people that in other offerings who really were uh, somewhat overwhelmed by, by the people in the course and how to navigate around and, you know, sort of their in, in experience. So just trying to make people feel that, that you and I, as the people, sort of the first facilitators that they run into were very approachable. So I perhaps went overboard because I was thinking, you know, I cut all of it out, assuming as you might, that if they wanted to know more about me, they could ask or or that they might go and, and Google me up or whatever, because I'm certainly all over the web. <laughs> you got Googled up. Yeah. <laughs> but but it's, a, it's a good point because it was a very thoughtful question and it made me think again, what is the role of that establishing the competency in terms of maybe that's another way that people have to do it uh, if they want to come in and feel relaxed, mm -hmm. right? So that they can come in and say, these people do know what they're doing, you know? And, and so maybe that's something I would look at as to how to do that and still keep that personal touch. I think that was certainly, I hadn't realized how important that might be to some participants to have that sense, you know, as I was a stranger to them, I guess. Yeah, um, interesting. It's almost yeah. like, you know, you want people to say, yeah, I do want to learn with you. Um, yeah. Not, I do want to have a dog like yourself. Like, here's my CV. <laughs> but, but you see, part of that I realized is because I have participated so much online and I do MOOCs all the time. I take people at, um, oh, it's wonderful you're here. Let's see what we can do together. And then you learn about them as you're interacting through the online experience. So I am not as concerned about, you know, where do you come from? Who do you work for? What, what's your title? But other people aren't there, right? So it's, and that was a good wake up call to me, I think, to really see it from that perspective. And there's lots of ways I can think of to do that yeah. um, without interfering with what I think is important and um, have learned over being part of these uh, BC Campus ISWOs is the, the personal connections that we formed at the beginning have often really helped people as they move through the stress of collaborating on their first mini session activity because certainly that model for a lot of instructors who come to us is really unfamiliar. They teach online and usually the only people that are part of that are the if they're at an institution that has an instructional designer or somebody who's going to help them with their course shell, right? right? But there's no other teacher in there with them and they don't have to collaborate. Now I've come from a background of team teaching so to me that was awesome. I love that but some people are really unfamiliar with that so that's a stress as well mm -hmm. and I really felt that those personal connections in that first week really help um, for those people that that get into it and they're stressed and trying to work together. So yeah anyway that was one of the other nuggets. It really made me go back and think about those things and in fact I'm I'm just working out a blog thing, just talking about how you build community and what that means to people and does it interfere with the learning, which was a question, mm -hmm. um, again, posed by some of our very thoughtful participants this time around. Yeah, I think one thing to keep in mind, too, is that <clears throat> it gives people something to do um, in the first week that um, is, you know, doesn't doesn't involve a lot of, you know, pe people know about themselves and they know, you know, they can answer the simple questions like what's out your window. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, maybe beginning to experiment a bit with the media, um, being able to put something together, even maybe using the forum for the first time without having to first do a reading and, you know, um, give your thoughts on something big and <laughs> yeah. complicated, you know, it's like what's outside your window. <laughs> exactly, yeah. which is a nice way to just express yourself and say hi without being too stressed. Yeah. Yeah, but the other, um, I guess one of the second things, the second nuggets that I uh, took out of this one is is how uh, much more participants get out of the experience when they are not only, that they're not as stressed by facilitating their mini sessions and that they can engage more with the readings and videos that we provide. Because I think the group that we have now, uh, maybe because they settled in, the majority of them settled in very quickly mm -hmm. uh, into the whole 
uh, flow of events in the ISWO. And so they really were digging into some of those readings and thinking really critically about them. And I thought it made the experience of each mini session much richer, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. being able to, to think back and compare what people were seemed to be deriving from the activities in prior ISWO. So finding a way to, to really help them do that a bit more and facilitate that, because this group seemed to do it naturally and um, and seem to also help each other, as you pointed out. And so that whole sense of community, I think, developed, mm-hmm. regardless of what happened in the introduction sessions. Exactly, or something, yeah. Right? So it, I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind. And maybe uh, one of the uh, points that you raised and uh, that I also was thinking about is that the whole idea about the FQs was partly uh, a participant had said well, one of the suggestions in one of the readings was to establish an area like an FAQ area in an open forum where uh, you could also go to kind of get a sense of what are the expectations in this course. Um, but in terms of setting the tone, you know, mm-hmm. in terms of, of what you can expect or what is expected of you and roles, that kind of thing. So for some people in terms of group formation, um, that that might be something that was that was something I hadn't thought about how we do that explicitly. You know, I think we do do it, but I don't. We haven't done it as an explicit activity yeah. to try and and help them see what are are their roles in each week. And so the roles could be could help to emphasize the importance of the readings and resources in terms of supporting each topic. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not sure that every group we've had moving through the mini sessions has really picked up on the the importance of the topic theme for each week. Mm-hmm. They've been so so uh, freaked out about uh, coordinating. You know, yes, it, t- yeah. it does tend to, to stress them out. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Yeah. So anyway, those are just some of the nuggets. I think we've covered quite a few of them. Do you yes. want to switch around and maybe talk about how we might... We, we've sort of been throwing in how we change our practice in the future. That's the looking forward thing. That's true. But it's hard to separate the back and the forward. <laughs> That's right. Um, but maybe if we reflect back on some of our, our nuggets and think about, we've already talked about what we might do in a couple of ways. Are there any other things that you were thinking of in terms of what you might change next time around? Um, well, yeah, I've been um, thinking about a few things. One is that, um, I mean, one thing that, and this is also a looking back, but it's it's, it's definitely a looking forward is, is um, I'm, I'm always um, thinking about the, the value of co-facilitation you know, I, and I've mentioned this to you before that um, I just can't even imagine doing this by myself. You know, it just works so well to have two people, um, different ideas, different, notice different things. Um, yeah. It just, it just works really well. And, and like you said, you know, having two Sylvias though can, can get kind of complicated sometimes. <laughs> um, but I really want to make sure we continue with this model going forward. Um, and, and, you know, really in a perfect world, I think that people who go through the ISWO would then consider taking the um, FDWO, which is the facil- Facilitator Development Workshop online. So it's the, it's the follow-on. It's, it's a, just a two-week workshop, but it's for people who want to facilitate the ISWO. And then um, the idea then would be maybe to team up with an experienced ISWO facilitator um, and have some kind of practicum mentorship kind of format and, and uh, you know, carry, carry on in that direction. So I, I really like to see us, um, you know, continue with this model of learning together because I think it really works well, mm-hmm. um, you know, in the idea that we're in this together. Um, and expanding on that just a little bit too is just thinking about different ways of um, taking advantage of what we've done in all past ISWOs, like finding a way to sort of bring that forward and, and, um, and allow other people to benefit from that. Um, I'm not personally used to working in a closed space, so this is quite different for me to be working in a space where it's just this group and we're not using, I mean, we're using some tools out there on the open web, but but not a lot. Yeah. Um, and so every you time I see, yeah, and every time I see somebody kind of struggling with, um, you know, I'm not sure what to do, I'm kind of drawing a blank with what to do with this mini session, I just think, wow, there's so many great ones that you know, have happened in the past, if yeah. only we could show those, you know, as, um, and, and so maybe that's something to work on in the future. Yeah, because, um, you know, the Justice Institute did that, uh, I think a couple of years ago, they invited everyone to come and show their courses, their course 
uh, design because of course all their course designs are done in in closed gardens you know like right. always behind a login and you can't share them outside that so they did a show and tell and everybody brought examples they had a great day it was just a uh, you know, you just did a walk around and I wish I could have been there, but, mm -hmm. um, and they actually posted recordings and it's because I think lots of teachers want to see how other people handle things. So if, yeah. you know, and we have to go back and get permission from some of the previous yeah. participants and, and find a way to, to do like a tour of some of the mini Yeah. 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 It'd be great. Or hey? yeah. Use that same model that you just described. Only do it online, like a showcase, bring people back together to do that cool idea. Yeah. Making yeah. a note. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and so another, so this is just sort of jumping um, to something completely different, but it, you know, also tying into what I was, um, some of my nuggets that I pulled out is, is really start to think hard about what to do um, before the ISW begins. Um, right. Because I, you know, I think that we do a pretty good job of making the expectations clear once people are in the course, you know, the course outline is pretty thorough. Yeah. Um, everything's available. Um, the whole course is available for people to sort of, you know, jump ahead and kind of get a lay of the land. Um, we do even have a, you know, a version of this course that's open and for the taking for people if they want to download it. Um, that they could look at any time, so they could see that, um, see yeah. the course and what they're getting into ahead of time. And so. Um, yeah, just thinking about what can we offer to people before the ISWO begins and, and you know, how can we support any of that pre-learning that needs to happen. Um, you don't know, you know, completely what you're getting into and obviously then you don't know, you know, what you might be lacking or what, you know, um, what you might need in terms of getting up to speed, but uh, not Could sure you do exactly. something like a MOOC? Because a lot of the universities now have been using MOOCs as a way to tease out interest. Mm -hmm. in, in some of their university programs. So so not that we're going to do a MOOC, but have some kind of an open, you know, the way Scope usually does things, have a little open event about a week prior or two weeks prior before you have to do the final intake kind of thing mm -hmm. and have them run through a mini session, right? So so let them come in and, and do a session uh, maybe that we facilitate, and it's it's uh, but it challenges them to use different parts of the course shell, right? That's use a idea. sort of yeah. empty one. Yeah, and, and find some way to kind of engage them. Because I've done that with courses, uh, you know, do like a bit of a treasure hunt at the beginning where you have to actually go and find things in important critical documents or find uh, pieces that you will look for later on. Where do you hand in your assignment or how do you know what's due or what team you're assigned on? You know, go find those things at the beginning and actually have to come back and report back mm -hmm. kind of. So even if that were a compressed little activity of some kind, yeah, that's a neat throw, idea. Throw it open for a couple of days and say, "Come in and 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 we'll just run you through this." You know. Yeah, I noticed um, also, and this is sort of a you know really simple way of, of doing things too. Is um, a Sloan Consortium, or they're not called that anymore. They've got no, I know. I can't remember what they're I can't remember. Doing. But they um, you know, they have a certificate program, and mm -hmm. what they do is for. I, get, I don't know if it's for the whole program or for each course within the program, is they have um, ahead of time a, a webinar, a web conference of some sort, and they just talk about, the, you know, the course yeah. and what like people are getting into. That's probably a good idea, too, just to have that yeah. sort of scheduled on a regular basis. But anyway, some things to think about. Um, yeah. But then the other thing, and I've kind of touched on this a little bit already, but... Um, you know, as this ISWO winds down, it's just like, you know, every other ISWO, I always start to think, you know, how can we kind of keep our connections alive and how can we yes. um, continue yes. to grow our um, resources together? Um, you know, I, I just envision this, you know, somehow um, having a space for that to happen. And I'm not sure what it would look like and what people can commit to and what's realistic and that sort of thing. But just, you know, things like the ISW Harvest Wiki. Mm -hmm. um, wouldn't it be great if everybody just continued to to use that? So that's something yeah. that you know, thinking ahead, I just want to give some more thought to. Yeah, that, how to make it happen? Yeah, because I mean, scope was wonderful. Um, we haven't had there haven't been very many open sessions in the last while because you've been so absorbed with the ISWO. Mm -hmm. But but that that kind of a platform has always been really useful. And the other thing that you always did after those open sessions is you always archived the resources. Right. So you could go in, and, and even if you hadn't been able to participate in the whole session, you could still learn along with everybody else. You know, in the years that you did tours of other 
uh, tools that people tested out and right. so on, and that was all shared. And so if we can keep on some of the learning, as you say, that's happening within the ISWO, really focused on online facilitation issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I mean, I, yeah, and looking at you know, you know scope and the open sessions. Actually, it's quite funny to look back at some of the really early ones and what we were talking about. Yeah. Know, it's neat to see the the history and how it's how it's worked, the development. Yeah, I just sent the link to a, a fellow I met at Etug last last week, and uh, and he emailed me back to say he had seen the scope site, but he hadn't realized that you archived sessions. And so when I told him to go and dig through some of the archived sessions because they covered topics we'd been talking about, you know, like badge digital badging and and so right. on, and open textbooks that kind of thing. And so he said he hadn't realized, and so he's having just a whale of a time just oh. flipping around in there trying to find out and and getting ideas for new learning for himself. Okay, well that's good to know because that's maybe something we need to make more obvious. <laughs> so there's yeah. all those things that people tell me that you know I didn't know about that. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, yeah. the, and the whole microscope uh, newsletter, what used to be newsletter is now your, your Scoop It site and so on. Yeah. So those kinds of things are really nice for people that are trying to stay connected. Yeah. So Good we just have to kind of find a way to channel because the focus is a little different for ISWO. Mm -hmm. You know, you really focus more on the instructional skills. Yeah. Yeah. So. What about you going forward? Uh, well, I was thinking actually one of the things that I still haven't quite resolved for myself and I want to see if maybe in discussion with you or or uh, Grant or some of the other ISWOers that um, um, in terms of um, the focus on facilitation skills and the idea about the importance of designing the online environment to allow learning to happen. I think we that topic's come up in the previous ISWO the participants talked about. It's not so much about teaching online, it's about creating an environment where people can learn. Mm -hmm. and, and that's part of being a facilitator too, but it's hard to know how we tie that in when the focus really in our time together is to get people a chance to practice together in the actual active facilitation. You know, trying to move people through activities and help them navigate the environment, but it's not so much on having them decide what the environment looks like. So in yes. the FDWO, you get a taste of that. So maybe we need to layer it a little bit so that that um, you take an instructional skills section where you know the focus is entirely on um, facilitation, because that's a lot. That's building community, establishing teacher presence, you know, helping people with, with those kinds of issues. It's very difficult without feedback, which is great to get with your right. peers. But then how do we move to the next thing, which is, um, you know, they're going to go on and design their own courses um, and teach online and so on. So how can they get a chance to test out design ideas that they have? Even things that we've run into in this uh, session when we're talking about how do you how do you use Web2 tools effectively? Mm -hmm. um, one, of the, one of the groups posted a video by um, uh, Curtis Bonk where he talked about uh, what happens when you move online is the assessment possibilities change so much. Right. So when you're doing an activity now, it's not just about how do you use the tool or engage your learners. It's also about how are you going to assess that activity in a realistic way. So we touch on that a little bit, but I still think that's an area where people maybe need to practice more. So I'm just kind of trying to gel some ideas about how we might do that. Mm -hmm. And part of it might be that ongoing <clears throat> sort of professional practice idea kind mm -hmm. of thing if we stay connected. I know. Mm. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds ideal. Yeah. All right. It's just always if you can make it happen because people are so busy. Yeah, that's the thing. I think we can make some of those things happen. All right. We'll rest over the holidays and then <laughs> yeah. come back. Come back all refreshed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for that. And we'll post this. Um, we'll post this in the course. We'll post it on YouTube. All right. YouTube. So, so the algorithms in YouTube will squish it. Yeah. <laughs> so those might be too big. Yeah. All right. All right. High five. All right. <laughs> yeah. See you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.